Hi everyone, my name is Vakas Ashraf, partner and CTO of Cooperative Computing, an entrepreneur and a technology enthusiast. In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at three packages specifically for writing PHP code in Sublime Text. So let's fire up Sublime Text and get started. First up, let's install the PHP getters and setters package that enables Sublime Text to generate getters and setters for your class properties. Let's open up the command palette, choose package control, install package, search for PHP getters and setters and install it. After the package has been installed, you'll see the PHP getters and setters options for your class properties in the command palette. Let's create a sample class and create two to three properties. Let's create a person class that should have a name, age, and phone number. After you have created the properties, open up the command palette and choose one of the options of the package to generate either just a setter getter or both for individual or all properties. So you can see generate getter for generate setter for if you select this option, it's going to give you the list of all the properties in your class and generate a getter for a specific property like name. Or you can generate both the getter and setter for one property or you can generate the getters and setters for all properties. Let's generate all and you can see there's the get name, there's the set name, there's the get age, there's the set age, get phone number, and set phone number. I would like to show you one more thing before we move on to the next package, that is create a doc block for each class property and type hint it properly using the PHP documenter at var annotation. So let's do that. Person name, that's going to be a string. Person age, that's going to be an integer. Person phone number, that is going to be an instance of the phone number class. After this, generate the setter for this, and you'll notice that this package will generate the setter type hinting your method parameter. So let's generate the setter for phone number, setter for phone number, and you'll immediately see that it has type hinted the phone number class for the phone number parameter. Pretty cool, right? Next up, we're going to be installing the PHP constructors package that will enable Sublime Text to generate your class constructor for the properties that you have defined in your class. Let's open up command palette, install, PHP constructors. After the package has been installed, just choose the option generate constructor for class. Hit enter. You'll immediately see that it generates the class constructor with the proper parameters that we need. All right, so let's close this file. The last package that I would like to show you for this tutorial is PHP Companion. As the package name sounds, it is indeed a companion package for Sublime Text for PHP. It presents a couple of great options, so let's look at those and see how this package can speed up our PHP coding workflow. So first, let's open up Command Palette, go to Install Package, search for PHP Companion, install that package. The package has been installed. The first option that I would like to show you is the import namespace option. So whenever I'm working with a PSR4 compliant framework using namespaces, the most annoying thing that I feel is to write the namespace in every class. This option inserts the namespace for me and instead of me writing it manually for every single new class that I create, now I can just use an option and do this in one second. So let's first do it the traditional way. Let's create a new class. Say I want to go into app services github github service.php this is a brand new path and did not exist before so first of all let's go to php class github service and let's define the namespace that should be app services github and this is how i used to do it in the traditional way so let's just remove the namespace and use the import namespace option, just hit enter. And you'll notice one thing, that it did not use the root element, which was the app. The way it works is it actually checks for the first Pascal case folder and then drill down within that. And since app is the root folder that is in lowercase, so it did not pick up that. So to fix this, let's save this as a project and let me put that in the proper directory which is laravel and save it as laravel.sublime-project there's the file open this up type 
PHP companion, start an object, namespace underscore prefix, and my namespace prefix is app. So we're good to go. Save that, close it, go to the import namespace option again, hit enter, and now you'll see it imported the correct namespace for our class. Let's create a new class. Let's say bit bucket bit bucket service.php start the php tag import the namespace we're done class bit bucket service and you can start coding next up is that you're creating a class that is either extending a class implementing an interface or you use other classes in your methods that you need to import in your class using the use statement the find use option makes this pretty easy for me i could just keep my cursor on the external class name and choose the option php companion find use from the command palette or press the respective shortcut key and that'll insert the php use statement in the class for me so let's create a class class my session store implements session now keeping my cursor on the word session i can use the find use word for php companion hit enter and since the session classes are multiple so it presents you the option to choose the right class so i'm actually implementing an interface so i'm going to choose illuminate contract session session and there you go so i don't have to remember that entire namespace anymore i just need to remember the class name and PHP companion will insert the use statement for me. Next up, if you code according to the solid programming principles that I would like to focus on the I in solid, which is the interface segregation principle, meaning you're coding your class by implementing one or more interfaces. By interface means you have to create the methods defined in the interface, otherwise your class won't work. Now, if an interface contains say one or two methods, putting them manually is okay, but if you're implementing multiple interfaces and the method count is basically over five methods, that'll become daunting. So the implement interface option of PHP companion creates the skeleton methods of the interface and then you can write up the rest of the code to make that method work. So let's use that. I'm in my class. Just go over to the interface name, which is session in our case. Open up the command palette and say implement interface. Hit enter. It's going to say illuminate contract session that's the interface that i'm implementing just hit enter and it's asking you which interface method that you want to create so i'm going to insert all of those insert all methods hit enter and there you go all of your interface methods are done basically with a new exception that method has not yet been implemented so what you can simply do is just go over here remove this line and code your implementation. That's how quick it is. The next option is basically the go to definition scope option, which works similar to sublime text go to definition option. So I'll leave that since we're already seeing that option in action in the previous videos. Now let's clear all of that class person. We just saw that to implement the constructor method, we first have to define the properties in the class and then choose the generate constructor for the PHP constructors package. For PHP companion, what we simply need to do is just go over there php companion insert constructor property hit enter and i can just define my property i can do it again h i can do it again phone number see how easy that is and the only thing that i see is it's by default setting all of my properties over to private that means if somebody extends my class, these properties are not going to be available. So what we need to do is we should set the visibility over to protect it. So let's remove all of this and let's open up the PHP companion package settings, PHP companion. Let's open up the default settings. And here we need to say visibility. There you go. Let's copy that. Go over to PHP companion user settings paste it over here and let's set the visibility to protect it and we're done let's insert the constructor once again and you can immediately see that the visibility of the property is now protected see how easy it is the last option that i would like to show you is expand fully qualified class name as the name sounds this will expand the full 
namespace for the class on which your cursor is present. That's great if you want to expand the full namespace inline and also for creating doc blocks. So let's do one thing. Let's create a controller app, HTTP, controllers, home controller.php. Let's import the namespace. Class home controller extends controller and let's define a public function index let's say return view home.index what this method is going to do is it's going to return an instance of the laravel's view class and i don't really know the full namespace of that so let's do this let's create a dog block returns the home view return type is going to be view I only know that it's going to be an instance of the view class. I don't know the full namespace, but for proper PHP doc blocks, you need to provide the complete namespace for this. So let's go do this. Go over to expand fully qualified class name, hit enter, tell which instance it's going to be. It's going to be returning an instance of the view interface implementation. I don't need to remember which implementation it is. I just need to return an instance of the view interface. So let's expand that and it expands inline. So that's how it is. And that is the same if I do something like this view make. And since I'm not including the view class as a use statement in my code. So what I can simply, if, if I just want to have inline, I can just say expand fully qualified, illuminate view, view, and that's pretty much it. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me up on social media. In the next video, we're going to be installing packages in Sublime Text that'll let us know of PHP errors while we're coding. Till next time, goodbye.